I, I really liked how our guys fought and battled. I asked them to have a warrior-like mentality heading into this game. And uh, I'm thankful, for, uh, thankful to God for the, the guys that he brought in my path to, to coach, that they get after it. Um, they sacrifice a lot. They do things that, um, that are about the right stuff. And I think you're seeing that. But were we perfect? No. Did Miami get in the paint? Um, did we have some breakdowns? We just didn't communicate a few things and they exploited it? Yes. But uh, I love the resiliency and the, the warrior-like attitude that I asked from them. And they laid it out there. And now we get a chance to contend for it tomorrow. Questions from the floor up front to the right. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Malcolm, uh, 16 turnovers. You guys got 19 points off that. How big a factor was that in, in getting a little separation? Um, I think huge. You know, we're not a we're not a team that that presses you really hard and, and forces turnovers. We try to keep it packed. But anytime we can, um, you know, get another team to turn the ball over that many times, we we try to capitalize on it. And I think we did tonight. Other questions for UVA? We've got Center Isle. Well, we'll go left against the wall first. Coach Dave Preston, WTOP Radio. Uh, second uh, ACC championship game appearance for you guys in three years. What does that mean for this program moving forward? Uh, it means I've recruited well, or we've recruited well. Our staff has. We've got the right kind of guys, and um, they play the right way. And, you know, they just we're just trying to do it the right way, as I said. And I, I think it, it hasn't been easy. This year has been a little different than the last one. Um, we know how good my um, Carol well, how good Miami is, and we know what Carolina. I didn't know the final score, but I think they put it on pretty good to Notre Dame and how potent they are. So we're looking forward to the opportunity. We'll have to be at our best. Center to our left, Malcolm uh, Ken Segura, the Atlanta Journal Constitution. It's interesting the turnovers you get. They don't always necessarily produce transition opportunities, but you just seem to guys seem to have a knack for for scoring off of them, and it's, I imagine it creates something of a demoralizing effect. Is there something to just the way that, you know, you get a turnover, you're maybe more mindful or, or more eager to, to score and, and, you know, put him in another, a bit of in a hole that way? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I understood the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you get a turnover, are you more mindful of let's get a, let's get a score here than, than you would another opportunity just because of, you know, you've got that chance to, to bury him a little bit? Uh, not necessarily. You know, when the opportunity is there, if we can get a turnover into a fast break. Otherwise, we just try to run our offense and, you know, not try to do anything out of the ordinary. Um, you know, I think the way we turned Miami over tonight, we were in the gaps. We were swiping at the ball. That's the pack line defense. And I think that that really frustrates teams. So, um, you know, they did get in the lane a good bit. But I think at the same time, we, we turned them over by, by being in the gaps. Front row to our left. Yeah, Malcolm, could you talk about your comfort level on the free throws when not all of the free throws have been going in for you guys? Um, you know, it's, it, free throw, it's all mental. It's, it's, not, it's nothing but uh, your mental. You just got to step up to the line and, and be confident in yourself and knock them down. Um, I feel like that's one of my roles on this team as, uh, you know, one of the older guys is to step to the line confidently at the end of the game and, and try to finish it. Back to Mike here in the front right. Uh, Mike from Richmond, London, the matchup with Carolina, you has played them not that long ago. Uh, what's the key to, to playing well again against them? Um, keep them off the offensive rebounds, uh, keep them out of transition. Uh, two big things that they do really well um, and two things that we try to pride ourselves on on, on the defensive side. So uh, it'll be uh, the clash of the different styles, but uh, we'll be ready for tomorrow. Staying on the right side, third row. David Glenn from the David Glenn Show and ACCSports.com. Malcolm, uh, both coaches and basically every player was so intense that they emotionally reacted to something good or bad. Do you force yourself to be the most even-keeled person ever, or does it come naturally? Um, you know, I think it comes naturally, but I also feed off my coach. He's not, he's not a guy that gets too, too, uh, too excited about anything. Um, and then the rest of my teammates. I, we're, we're a pretty even-keeled team, but I, I try to pride myself on the court as being one of the guys that can – you know, remain calm and not show any emotion. That's, that's just one of the things I do. To our left at the aisle, second row. London, this is for you. Uh, Frank Maloney, who's talking? Fox Sports 910, Richmond. Uh, tonight you really did a great job handling the press at the end of the game. Miami kept coming and coming and coming. What were you looking for and how did you ball fake so well? Um, in the press, I, the only thing I really look for is Malcolm, to be completely honest. Uh, uh, we, we just have that, 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 
that touch between both of us. So we, we know that we want to get it into his hands at the end of the game so he can knock down those free throws. And uh, we, that we have a connection from the, the past three years that we've been playing together. And uh, when it comes down to the last couple of minutes, uh, I'm really just trying to get the ball into Malcolm's hand. And if he has it, he's getting trapped. He's trying to get it back to me. So um, uh, that, uh, that's really what I'm looking for. Stay in the center aisle. Third row. Hi, Ava Wallace from the Washington Post. Tony, um, what Malcolm said about the free throws and being in that mental space, what does that say about your guys' readiness in the postseason and where you are? Well, you need to be composed. Apparently, David Clinton didn't think I was too composed. So, you know, I, I think our players, <laughs> no. I think um, they have a, a steadiness about them, and, and you have to. And even though I told the guys that missed some, you'll get your chances again. You step up. I think Malcolm said it best. But... Uh, you, you have to be able to finish games. You have to be able to make free throws. You have to be able to get stops, um, get big rebounds. Those are all the things that are huge in games that swing back and forth. It seems like this tournament have been big comebacks, even in a lot of conference tournaments. So you just have to stay locked in until the final buzzer, as, as we're seeing. Back to Mike here in the front. Uh, Mike from Richmond for both the players. A couple of years ago when you got that overall, that one seed in the NCAA tournament, I know it meant a lot to everybody. Is that something that you guys talk about and would a one seed in this tournament matter? No, we're not even worried about that. We're just worried about what's ahead of us. Uh, and worried about the game tomorrow. Um, and then we'll, after that game tomorrow, then we'll, we'll, we'll worry about what's, what's ahead of us in the tournament. But we're taking it one game at a time. And uh, the qu we're, we're just worried about Carolina tomorrow. Fourth row to our right. Coach, uh, Scott Zalatoro from College Troops Daily. Are you at all concerned about Anthony's foul trouble? He's had a last couple games, a lot of foul trouble. Yeah, well, he, he picked up one early, and you know, I decided to take him out. I don't know if Whitey's in here, so I can respond to that. He asked that question last time. Um, it's a physical game. Things happen. But, um, you know, we, we, need, we got in foul trouble with Isaiah Wilkins. Uh, even Evan and Anthony, the way their their quickness, the way they went at us and put us in ball screens, and that's why we went with the four guard lineup. But we had, I think we showed some versatility with that. You know, you want guys to obviously stay out of foul trouble, but they can't be passive on the floor. So want him to be aggressive, but just be as smart as he can, and that's that's part of it. And play with his feet, not his hands. Staying on the right, third row, coach. A lot goes into uh, saying you have the right kind of guys who play the right way. Uh, Two first place finishes, an ACC title, you're going back to the ACC title game. Just elaborate on what goes into you saying, I have the right kind of guys and they play the right way. Because they're, um, you know, our program, we base it on what we call our pillars, and the first one is humility. And it's just guys that they don't think too highly of themselves, they don't think too lowly, they just they know who they are, they have a true identity. And I love guys that have humility like that. You know, they're willing to buy in and they're passionate. That's our second pillar, and I can go through all of them, but, but they have that mentality, and I, I love that they're humble. And I mean that. That's a position of great strength. A lot of people think it's weakness. True humility is strength, and these guys are, are humble in the right way, and then they play that, and that's where you start. And we can go through adversity with them, and we can go through success with them. First row far left. Mark Carroll with ACCSports.com. Malcolm, uh, it seemed like every time you guys started to go on a run, the crowd would really get into it. Has it felt like you've played two home games in a row these past two days, or it, as players on the floor on this kind of stage, do you not really notice that? No, you definitely notice it. Um, I don't know about home games, because our home games are pretty crazy, but we've had an awesome fan base um, that's given us great support and great momentum during these games. And, uh, you know, if any team had home base here, it's us or North Carolina. So, um, you know, our fans have been awesome for sure. I think for our team, we have a lot of versatility and a lot of depth that really helped us tonight. So, you know, we got a guy like Tobe who came in and played good minutes, Evan. And so this is just bigs. Um, and for myself, you know, I try to, you know, play as big as possible. I know I'm a little undersized. Um, so, yeah, just try to fight hard early. Mike set the tone when he got on the ball, and he got me a ball and gave me a layup. And I was able to get on the floor later in the game. So, yeah, 50-50 balls definitely help us control our energy and things like that. Uh, speaking of energy, this tournament's a grind. You're playing yeah. really good teams, three straight nights. Well, it'll be three straight nights tomorrow. Um, talk a little bit about um, you know, staying focused and how you guys were able to bring that energy every night. Um, right when we got in here, our senior leaders told us, you know, focus up. You know, this one's over. Be prepare for tomorrow. Um, go home and rest your bodies. And, you know, everybody's going to get up and play hard for the championship game. So uh, it'll be fun. And this will be your first ACC title game coming up here. Uh, it's a blessing. I'm really happy to be here with these guys. I love these guys like brothers. So uh, we'll come out, play hard tomorrow, and have some fun. Yeah, I mean, definitely going into this game knowing uh, 
how good, how good of a team Miami is and how good Jakiri is going inside. I mean, I was definitely excited for the, for the challenge and just trying to be as aggressive as I possibly could. I think a big key for us tonight was really just trying to keep them out of the paint. I know when we went down to Miami, we kind of struggled with that a little bit. They got into our paint too much. And uh, I think we did a good job, a better job at least, of getting, keeping them out of the paint. I think at times they still were able to, but for the most part, I think we did a pretty good job. And with, uh, with Isaiah, you guys both seem to hit the deck a couple of times. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta hit win those fifty fifty battles in order to win a game. I mean coach always always saying the tougher team's gonna win in the postseason especially. And I think just he also says usually whoever wins fifty fifty battles usually winds up winning the game. So uh, I mean that's just something that's emphasized a lot in practice and in their locker room. So just keep trying to implement that on the court, implement that on the court. And just to pick back on a question earlier, your senior year another title game you know, here a couple years ago. Talk about what that means to you to be able to play for an ACC title in your senior year. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's amazing. This is what you this is what you want. I mean, especially going into your senior year, you really want to go out, out with a bang. So uh, just trying to – we're lucky to be playing tomorrow and uh, definitely going to attack it with everything we got.